Hello there, I'm Dr. Benjamin Norris <coughs> from Frostburg State University and in this video I'm going to discuss electrocyclic reactions. This video is going to focus on the mechanism and we'll talk about the reversibility of these reactions. I'm going to give you an important biochemical example and we'll get into the stereochemistry a little bit. Um, but I have another video coming up after this one that will go into the stereochemistry in more depth including providing the molecular orbital uh, explanation for uh, the origin of that stereochemistry. So, as a reminder, electrocyclic reactions are reactions of a conjugated pi system, like this one. So this, here's 1,3,5-cyclohexatriene, and it's drawn... Uh, in a way that suggests that this molecule can somehow cyclize into a six-membered ring. And, and that is indeed what this reaction does. Right? And there is a net conversion here uh, of one pi bond into one sigma bond. If you count the pi bonds and sigma bonds in the reactant and the product, the reactant has five sigma bonds and three pi bonds product has six sigma bonds and two pi bonds. So let's draw the mechanism for this reaction. Uh, like most pericyclic reactions, this mechanism is actually really simple. I'm just get my mechanism arrows here. Um, and like most pericyclic mechanisms, you can start at any of the pi bonds, and you can go in any direction, clockwise or counterclockwise. And I'll draw this is the clock, or sorry, this is the counterclockwise version. I will draw the clockwise version in a moment. Okay. And then, as a reminder, that this is a concerted reaction; everything happens at the same time, and it is has a cyclic transition state. It looks like this. That's what makes it a pericyclic reaction. I'm just going to copy and paste this, but delete my arrows, and draw the mechanism in a clockwise fashion. You can start from any of the pi bonds and draw the mechanism around in a circle. And I have a tendency to actually draw where we're going to form a new sigma bond where things aren't previously connected. I actually have a tendency to like to draw that arrow to the space where that new sigma bond is going to form. Like all pericyclic reactions, uh, electrocyclic reactions are reversible, uh, though just how reversible they are depends on uh, the structure of the product. So uh, this reaction here, the conversion of cyclohexa 1,3,5-hexatriene into cyclohexadiene favors the, the cyclic product. You know, and the reason for that is that we are converting a sigma bond, or I'm sorry, a pi bond into a sigma bond, and sigma bonds are stronger than pi bonds. But this is not always the case. Here, oop. Here is an example using 1,3-butadiene. 1,3-butadiene undergoes electrocyclic reaction to form cyclobutene. And this is an example where the forward reaction actually is much less likely than the reverse reaction. Even though the we've converted a pi bond to a sigma bond, this cyclic product has angle strain that is relieved when the 
reaction runs, I'm sorry, that is relieved when the reaction runs in reverse. And so not all of these reactions are, are favored in the forward direction. We are going to talk about some ways to, to kind of make these work, um, but they're not all favored in the forward direction. Some of the, these electrocyclic reactions are actually electrocyclic ring opening reactions. And then I wanted to share with you an important biological example, biochemical example. Right. Here is, I've got to adjust the positioning of these structures because the one's going off the side of the, my screen here. Here is an important reaction that occurs in the biosynthesis of cholesterol. This structure over here on the left is 7-dehydro, I'm sorry, not in the biosynthesis of cholesterol, it comes from cholesterol. This structure over here on the left is 7-dehydro cholesterol, and this is a step in the biosynthesis of uh, vitamin D. And it's specifically a precursor to cholecalciferol, which is the form of vitamin D, vitamin D3, that um, animals make. And this step that's likely occurring inside you as you are watching this video, uh, if you're being exposed to UV light, that is, uh, is an electrocyclic ring opening. Actually, I'm going to need to, I'm just going to get rid of this hydrogen out here because it is in the way of my mechanism. Here we go. Okay. We start at any of the pi bonds and go around in a circle. This is actually the mechanism of one of the ring opening reactions. Okay. So this is an electrocyclic ring opening of 70 hydrocholesterol to form. Uh, a precursor to cholecalciferol. There's actually one more paracyclic reaction that needs to happen, and it's a sigmatropic rearrangement. So when we get to the video on sigmatropic rearrangements, I will show you that second step in the conversion of dehydrocholesterol to cholecalciferol. And to wrap this video up, I actually just wanted to say a little bit about the stereochemical outcome of these reactions. And, um, to do this, I need to draw things a little bit differently. I need a little bit more space to show all of the, the substituents. Ooh. There we go. So let's imagine that I had a structure that looked like this. And it undergoes electrocyclic ring closure to form stereospecifically I'm sorry, this diastereomer. But if I were to switch the stereochemistry of the original compound, I would get a different diastereomer, and this one is chiral, so we get the enantiomer out of this. Just to be clear about that. Strangely, if I were to change these conditions from allowing them to happen without UV irradiation to allowing them to happen with UV irradiation, we would get different outcomes. If you irradiate these reactions with UV, you get the opposite stereochemical behavior from uh, the same kinds of structures. And this was actually perplexing for a while, but fortunately for all of us, the, the problem has been solved. And the next video on this topic, 
will introduce you to the uh, stereochemical aspects and how we can predict them by understanding the molecular orbitals that are involved in these reactions. So stay tuned for that topic and thank you for watching.